everybody. Welcome to WP Coffee Talk, where I talk with my WordPress friends, old friends, new friends that I'm making at the time um, over coffee and or whatever's in our cups because sometimes it's late at night when we're recording and so coffee isn't necessarily the beverage of choice um, and it depends on, depends on when this is when we're uh, when we're recording this but tonight today I have the pleasure of speaking with a good friend of mine Matt Graham Matt how are you today I'm doing well and yourself I'm doing fine thank you it's good to see you good to see you too I know I just saw you not too long ago at WordCamp Hamilton yes I love that our paths get to cross at different word camps, um, but that even in between times we Facebook message each other and we Slack each other. And of course, you know, um, you're one of my what I call my Canadian contingency, like all my WordPress Canadian friends. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, like you know, and, and I like to joke about the fact that two things that I'm the token American in your Canadian Slack channel, and that I am um, that I'm kind of big in Canada because I speak at a lot of work. You are. <laughs> work camps true. There. And then I really show up and people are like, I'm sorry, who are you? Oh, your name's not on the list. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Matt Graham, it's great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So um, I'm, um, I'd say a developer, uh, not specifically WordPress, but I do a lot of WordPress development. Um, a freelancer. I, uh, yeah, I do a lot of different things. I've done everything from like super simple sites for people all the way up to like full custom plugins and, and themes. Um, I'm working on a startup right now. It's in the financial sector and I live uh, just east of Toronto, Canada um, with my wife and two boys. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much me in a nutshell. That's great. And what, what's the name of your town? I could never remember. Oh, Whitby. Whitby. Uh, yeah, the, the, the joke is Whitby, but it's, it's Whitby. <laughs> I always want to say St. Catharines, and that's not where you live, and I don't know no, why I have that in my head. Uh, it's it's, it's the, this side of the border. It's okay. Oh, there you go. That must be. It's all Canada's one that's right. place. That's right, anyway. yeah. You know John from, or Bob from, you know, Winnipeg. Calgary. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Although I might know him from Calgary, because I know people from Calgary, but that's beside the point. <laughs> I just want to go to Whistler way out in Vancouver because I've seen like TV shows about it. It looks pretty awesome, but. So um, do I. Um, I actually have a cousin who, uh, who works out there and I still have yet to be out in Whistler. I've passed through Vancouver and that's about as it as, as much as I've seen um, of the Vancouver Whistler kind of corridor yeah. into Victoria, which is lovely, but I haven't been to Whistler yet. I don't think that a lot of Americans realize that Canada is bigger than the United States. It's true. It's uh, it's not when you actually look at it. It's not significantly bigger, but it is big enough that you go, oh, oh, landmass. It. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that there's a lot more unexplored territory too. Exactly. Or unsettled there's territory. Lots, lots of open space. I mean, where you uh, think of the states as you know being from town to town, maybe an hour. We're talking uh, if you want to go from Toronto to Winnipeg, which is essentially the next big city west of Toronto, it's a 14 to 16 hour drive, unless you cut through the States, which I think it cuts, it cuts it down by two or three hours, but not yeah. that much. Yeah, I was actually looking at um, the possibility of going to WordCamp Halifax, but I would have had to drive, and I thought, oh, it can't be that far. Uh, it's like an 18 hour drive from Rochester, oh, New York, so. It's, it's pretty far. Yeah. yeah, so that one I, I had to kind of say, well, it wasn't in my, my, um, my ability to get there last year anyway. Yeah, so. Right. so show me your mug. What mug are you drinking from this evening? Uh, it is, well, here, I'll show you the, the other side. Uh, Rocky Alpine. It's, it's a, it's a I'm, I'm not even sure the company still is around, but um, a friend of mine was part of it, and we got this as a Christmas gift last year. Oh, um, nice with some hot chocolate which you know was really nice especially when it got cold you know canadian winters and all that i like to say that the most southern part of canada is the most northern part of the u.s so <laughs> if we're cold in rochester you guys are probably much colder exactly further north exactly. of the border yeah but, and what's in your mug tonight uh coffee uh it's a long shot and an espresso shot because I have a fancy coffee maker in my office that that does espresso and has a little nice. the steamer thing and all that stuff, but it's just it's pretty much just straight coffee. I mean, it's it's nice though. I like it. I'm using my Wonder Woman mug tonight. Of course. 
Yeah. I have several of them. This is this is the one. I think I used this one on on a previous show, um, but I really like it. It's sparkly. See. Oh, very nice. Yes. Isn't that nice? That was from Terry Tillich from Pittsburgh. That was a gift from her. And yes. I am drinking um, a medium roast with cream and sugar because I only started co- drinking coffee two years ago. Really? I know. Crazy, right? What? So okay. I know, I've, I've always been a tea drinker, but I was never a coffee drinker. Mm. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, I'm going to try it. But I have to put cream and sugar. And now I'm not putting as much cream and sugar as I used to. Yeah. I understand that you can start to back off it after a little while. So, yeah. uh, so that's what I've been doing. Yeah, that's what I do. I usually use cream and just like half a teaspoon of sugar. I don't use yeah. much. Yeah. Well, you can't have a WP coffee talk show and not drink any coffee. That's true. That's very you true. Know, that'd be kind of crazy. But you were the first person that I ever um, talked to about the idea of having this podcast. Yes. I don't know if you remember, we were on I Slack and I, and I said to you, do you think there's room in the podcast ecosystem, WordPress kind of... Um, you know, area to have one more, one more podcast. And you said, if you do it differently than everybody else, absolutely. That's the thing, right? Finding, yeah. finding your niche. And I think uh, a lot of the other podcasts are very much news based or, you know, what's happening. It doesn't really talk about the community, which I think is fantastic. Well, I'm all about the community. I'm not a developer. You can speak PHP and Java and JavaScript. And, you know, I was telling um, Amanda Gorman and in her interview, I, I with me on WP uh, Coffee Talk, I said, I just want to know what the que- why there's so many question marks in PHP. Don't tell me now, but you can tell me later. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's got to do something, right? So, yeah, exactly. um, and, and all I know is that one little misplaced uh, semicolon and your whole web- website can go down. So Yes, that is true. So everything balances, right? That's a, just let that be a lesson to everybody. Don't edit your theme <laughs> or your plugins. No. No, do, it, it, unless, you, unless you know exactly what you're doing. And yeah, even with child themes, unless you know what you're doing, yeah. don't touch the code. CSS, yeah. okay, even CSS can be messy. So yeah, leave it to the <laughs> professionals. That's right, that's right. So how did you get started with WordPress? I actually don't know the answer to this question. I've known you for many years, but I've never heard your WordPress origin story. So tell me. Well, okay. So going back, uh, I'm going to say almost 20 years now. No, not quite 20 years. Anyway, 15 to 20, let's say that. Um, I actually had a blog that was, I I don't want to say it was super popular, but when I mentioned the name of my, my site, they're like, oh, you're that guy? I'm like, you know who I am? Um, Anyway, it was the mind of Matty G. It wasn't really it was just me ranting and this was back when blogging was was relatively new um i used at the time i used uh movable type which is still around i think and blogger um which has been eaten by the google machine um (laughs) but uh and then about four or five years later i found out uh, found out about WordPress and it was very much a blogging platform then. I don't think it even had the pages um, functionality yet. Um, So like, cause I think that came out in 2.0 and I found it, I think at 1.4 or something like that. Anyway. Early adopter you. Very, very, yeah, I am, I'm, I'm an early adopter. I'll be honest. I'm usually, well, up until a couple years ago, I was the one waiting in line for Apple products. Uh, I know that's a little bit of, (laughs) a little bit of an early adopter yeah anyway um but yeah and i used it for a while to blog and then i went back to school to to do um it was originally web design web web development but then kind of transitioned into multimedia design i know that's passe word nowadays but uh yeah multimedia design so you know doing design doing um uh like motion graphics but web was still much a part of that and that's where i learned about php that's where i learned i I mean i'd done programming in high school but i'd never gotten into into php yet um and that's when i started oh okay wordpress uses php i know this now uh of course wordpress is a little bit a little bit of its own animal when it comes to php but that's that's beside the point but yeah so um but within the last, I'd say about five years, I've actually been doing some significant um, 
uh, development when it comes to, you know, uh, themes and plugins. Um, I've kind of settled on what I use for my theme and, you know, modify it as necessary and plugins. I try not to have to do my own because there's lots out there. Um, you know, but there's still times where, you know, you have to roll your own. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind of history in a nutshell. I love it. That's awesome. You and I have been to a lot of WordCamps. We've been to a lot of meetups. We've seen hundreds and thousands of websites. Yes. When you think about the sites that you see, especially the ones, let's, let's really focus on people who are just starting out maybe yeah. or building for their own, for their own business. Right. What are things do you think that they don't know about or they skip over or don't focus enough attention on that would take their website from where it is to being an, an even better website? And this is almost uh, speaking to myself as well. Um, but a lot of people don't think about the connections to the website. The website in and of itself, it's great. Um, you know, when people want to find your site, assuming you have, you know, good content that, that Google can index, um, people will find you. But there are better ways of helping people find you through social media. Um, whether that's, you know, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, you know, all of those. Um, but even down to, to YouTube and um, video marketing and, um, you know, email marketing, having people sign up for your, your newsletter, even if it's a once a month thing, um, keeping people, uh, keeping yourself at the top of people's minds. Because um, it's not just about a landing page, although, you know, a lot of people get enough business where they don't need all this stuff and a website is just to add credibility for people who are starting out that want to do, you know, want to build their business. It's not just about the website. It's about all these connections like tendrils going throughout the internet that, you know, bring, bring your brand to the forefront. So SEO is about more than just content then. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's great advice. Really great advice. And you're the first person to say that actually and all the people I've interviewed so far. So yeah. So I think you're my 14th interview, I think. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Yeah. Um, when you think back to when you were starting and more, well, either starting with blogging or starting as a business with mm -hmm. WordPress, what's something that you wish you'd known then that you know now? Oh my. I know it's probably a long list. For, it is probably for all of us, but think one or two yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Um, I I think a lot of it has to do with with uh, you know building out my timeline to build a site. You know, when I think about it, I always think about how I have everything up front. Uh, you know, imagery, content, that that sort of thing. You know, what uh, what tendrils that I was saying before the customer wants and that's not always the case and even when because um, I've been doing a lot of work through another agency um, and even they don't think about everything even though they're also in the web space so you know having a checklist of all the things that need to be done um, or that need to that whether they need to be done to get started or need to be done for the site to go live. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's a huge thing. I still to this day don't always think about everything. Um, you know, I, I think at one point I had a checklist, but it got lost in the cloud somewhere. I'll share so. mine with you. I'll send you my checklist. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I'll tell you one of the reasons that I made a checklist is there were certain things that I would continue to forget to do. And mm. one of them was to set the permalinks because permalinks by default have some crazy nomenclature. Oh, it's like question mark P equals or something like right. that. Yeah, Which exactly. Nobody's going to find that or nobody's going to share that. You know, it doesn't make any sense. So you want to use your page titles and your post titles as your um, as your permalinks, yeah. but if you, but that doesn't come default that way. And so I would forget to do that. And the client, the, I remember the first time a client said to me, why is the page look like that in the, in the toolbar and the URL bar? I was like, cause I forgot to just flip that little switch. Let me get that right now. <laughs> it's, and that's the thing, right? It's, it's, it's always the small stuff that you forget. Like it's just yeah. click save done, yeah. but you don't think about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll tell you one of my favorite things to do with the WordPress site is to make a custom 404 page. Have you ever done that? I have, um, and I know yours very well because you've used it at least in one talk that I remember, possibly more than one. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I I remember um, the the best one that I made was like uh, it was it was a the the theme of it was um, kind of like. Uh, an endless field because they're like endless knowledge. It was a, it was a university thing anyway, mm -hmm. but the 404 page was a giant image of uh, a cliff. It's like you've reached the end. <laughs> Turn back now. <laughs> this is That's not great. the content you're looking for. I think I actually did a random string for the header. Uh -huh. and it was like, you know, like a Yoda quote type thing or, the, or like a, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the one I remember the most. One of my favorite things to do is to go to a website and hack their 404 yeah. just to see what it's, if it just says, um, you know, that page doesn't exist. I'm like, oh, missed opportunity. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you know, you're not going to put something funny on every website. Like if you're building a website for a funeral parlor. Yeah. You're not going to put a picture of an empty grave. I yeah. mean, <laughs> you could, I guess, but <laughs> perhaps a little, um, you know, compassion less, yeah. but, uh, but you could put something appropriate, of course. But my favorite thing to do is to put something funny when it's appropriate. So. Of course. So I'm going to write this down now. I need to actually go and do my own 404 page. because <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to hack it next week. So, you know, <laughs> all right, I will have something for you next week. <laughs> and the one you're referring to of mine, I, I think was from my marketed by Michelle website. I, yes. I've had, it's going away soon because I'm not taking new customers anymore, yeah. but I think I'm going to redeploy that 404 to my new website, nice. which is uh, works by Michelle. And I don't have one for coffee yet. Co don't be coffee talk, but I think it's going to be an empty cup. <laughs> nice. You need to go refill. You need to refill. That's right. Well, the yeah. one that you're talking about though is a picture of the, of me in the fifth grade mm -hmm. where my braids are coming apart. My eyes are a little, my glasses are crooked. My smile's crooked. And it's like, yeah, I didn't want to see that either. <laughs> but you ended up here. Yeah. <laughs> turn back, turn back. Or the picture, oh, that would be, you know, another good one would be that picture from the Wizard of Oz where it's like, do not enter, turn back. Yeah. This is your last chance. Exactly. <laughs> Too much fun. Yeah. Too much fun. You have been to a bunch of different um, word camps, of course. Yep. I see you at quite a few of them and enjoy spending time with you. You're my, my friend and I love spending time with my, with my friends at word camp. So that's always fun. Absolutely. But when you think of all the talks you've given, the talks you've heard, the opportunities, whether it's at a meetup or word camp, what's something that really stands out to you as like one of those really awesome moments where you just like all the, the, you know, all the stars aligned that it was like just the perfect word camp moment. Tell us one or two of those. Oh, um, I mean, the, the, the thing, I mean, the thing that gets me up in the morning is helping people. I really like it. I really like seeing, you know, um, people succeed. Um, there was, I, I honestly don't remember the problem, but I remember the interaction. It was a, it was a, a, from what I remember, it was just a CSS problem uh, with, with word, with WordPress. And I went in, you know, kind of showed them um, how uh, the Google uh, developer tools works in Chrome and just show them, well, this is what it look, this is what it should look like, right? Yeah, okay. So now you take that and then you go and you put it in your CSS file. Like, that's it? Like, <laughs> yeah. Is that like at a happiness bar? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was at the happiness bar, I believe in Hamilton. I can't remember. I think it was the, uh, I want to say, for, it might have been the first year, but I think it was the second year. So it would have been it's this year. It was 2018? Yeah, 2018. It's a lot okay. of yeah. 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 No, it was, uh, that's, that's the thing that really, that I really love. Like even with the, my local, uh, meetup that, uh, me and three other people run. Um, I just like, so we, I, I love doing the site clinics. I think that's, yeah. that's one of the big things. Like here's, here's my site. This is my problem. Okay. So how do you want to like, what's, what would be the best way to solve that for you? And then you go, okay, well, this is what we can do to do that. And just, yeah, I mean, you know, some, seeing the relief on people's faces when, you know, when you go, well, this is how you do it. Oh, okay. 
you know, it's just like, it's that easy or, oh, you saved me or, you know, that sort of, yeah. that sort of, yeah, conversation. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I remember some t- one time helping somebody replace their HT access file, which went yeah. from some white screen to I have my site back. And like, you know, at that point in time, if you wanted to, you could extract any amount of money you wanted from that person. <laughs> but it's it, not right? about that, right? It's just no, about it's giving not. back. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, yeah. and that's what the, that's what the community is all about. I mean, yeah. yes, we're, we, we need to make money. We need to make a living. We need to put a roof over our head, you know, food on the table. Um, but so do, so does everyone else. And that might, that doesn't necessarily mean creating a website it might be the website helps them create that income and you know what if it's five ten minutes of your time even if it's you know an hour at at a word camp or at a meetup Mm -hmm. that's invaluable to people and i think goodwill goes further than an invoice yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, I've, I've outsourced to people in the WordPress community mm-hmm. and absolutely paid them for their, their time and their efforts. Absolutely, yeah. But then also I've helped people, you know, at a meetup and had them help me where it's not about exchanging money. Just like you said, it's really just about paying forward, paying back in the yeah. community and helping each other out. And that's, that's yeah. a wonderful thing. And when somebody's first time in the community and you help them and you don't expect something from them, they're dumbfounded. Yeah, it's true. It's so yeah. true. Right? It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it totally is. a lot of fun. It really is. So tell us what your favorite um, WordCamp talk is that you've given. Like, what's one that you love to share with people and why? Um, well, my first one was actually WordCamp Hamilton. Uh, and it was, uh, it was a really nerdy topic. Um, using WordPress as a, um, as a framework for a web app. Um, and really using tools that, you know, are readily available, like, uh, you know, um, CPT UI, uh, advanced custom fields to basically create different types of data that you can use um, and then use the WordPress um, REST API to feed into whether that's like something like um, an Angular or a React app or something, you know, for mobile, whether that's iPhone or Android. Um, and, you know, it's just, it, it, you could actually deploy something relatively easily. Um, again, you know, very nerdy topic, so I won't get too deep into it. But um, I, I know the, the how, how's, lang- how's language uh, on, on the podcast? Because I want to... Uh, it's- I don't think we have any children watching this. Okay, fair enough. Um, so the the big question that I got was, so when you're doing that, don't you think of that as a bastardization of, of, of the post? And I'm like, well, no, that's what post types are. You know, you're changing the way that, you know, the standard post, you know, utilizes data. You know, if it's as simple as, you know, not being date-based like the pages or adding... Uh, a whole bunch of custom fields to it to make it work the way you need it to. And that was, I mean, well, the first time, first, you always remember your first time, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. Speaking of no children watching. <laughs> your kids are out of your shot, I hope. <laughs> oh, I'm at the office. So yeah, oh, okay. just, they're not here. They may watch this someday. Eh, you know, but, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the double entendre will be lost on them. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully. <laughs> um, you did make me think of something, and of course I've forgotten it just as quickly as it popped in my head. I was going to ask you. Yeah, I don't know. It's lost. It's gone. It's okay. It'll come back. It's Hopefully okay. it'll come back. Uh, so tell us, you know, anything else that is exciting for you? Like what's going on? Where are you speaking next? Do you know? Are you? So, um, so I'm doing the same uh, panel talk that we did in Hamilton, um, uh, page builders in the age of Gutenberg. Um, so hopefully have, you know, a couple different people just to get different perspective um, on it. Um, Cause I mean, pers- I personally use a page builder. I use Beaver builder for, for most of my builds. Uh, and it, it works really well. I know how to, you know, manipulate it and change things the way, um, the way that the designer intended, you know, functionality wise or design wise. Uh, 
and um i know that uh which i'm i I know we're going to get into in a few minutes probably but um there's there was a big issue with with gutenberg um and there still is but you know i I see a lot of potential in it so seeing the future of you know beaver builder or any page builder that people use and gutenberg how are those two going to live side by side Mm -hmm. um or is one going to take over the other um I mean, Gutenberg is built into core now, so it's it's not going away. Um, but does that mean that it's going to kill off page builders? Does that mean that they're, yeah, are they going to live side by side? How is that going to happen? Right. Um, yeah, that sort of thing. So where are you going to give that talk? Uh, WordCamp Ottawa, which is July... 13th and 14th, I think. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. I'll be there I, too. Yes. <laughs> Good. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. And I was on your panel in Hamilton. So it'd be yes, interesting to hear other, yeah. pe- other people contribute to that conversation. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really interested to see what, uh, what the community at large really thinks. Um, yeah, for sure. Because I, I know there, there are basically three camps. There are no to page builders, no, no to Gutenberg and embrace everything. So, or, you know, <laughs> maybe there's four you know some um, kind of hybrids in there probably yeah exactly and yeah just to see how everyone how everyone uses uh, everything yeah, it's yeah. Good. i was never a naysayer to gutenberg per se mm-hmm. but i was i'm always like gonna learn it gonna learn it gonna learn it because i don't really take on new clients anymore because of my job i full-time job with give right. but um but i still am build like i just built wp coffee talk a few weeks ago and things like right. that and as you know i'm a i'm a big divi user uh, but and I've been wanting to learn Gutenberg. Well, I'll tell you what, the fastest way to, lo- to learn Gutenberg, organize a WordCamp. <laughs> because yes, the, wor- the WordCamps too, yeah. The WordCamps have Gutenberg built in. And you know what? You can, of course, click over to the Classic Editor. They have that there as well. But I've been challenging myself not to do that when I've been working with, um, with the WordCamp uh, templates that are the themes that they have. And so I've been learning a little bit more of how to... Uh, navigate around in Gutenberg and I'll tell you what once you learn it it's pretty pretty okay yeah it, it is and I mean like I say I think there's there's lots um, there's lots of good in it and there's lots of potential mm-hmm. that's I think that's the biggest thing right now for me um, as long as it continues to grow right exactly and it continues to grow continues to improve um, from uh, a multitude of the you uh, the u- user experience and from accessibility point of view once those things get ironed out it's going to be fantastic it really will mm-hmm. and that's the other thing is uh, taking into account accessibility so when i first started building websites i didn't even know that that was a thing mm-hmm. and i was just ignorant to it i didn't i didn't you don't know what you don't know um, right. and now when i'm building a website i'm paying attention to accessibility throughout as soon as I upload a photo it's got the alt text in it you know Mm -hmm. and I'm and I'm making things uh, more accessible for people who are visually impaired for people who are auditorily impaired for people who have other um, you know uh, challenges with using the internet so hopefully I know I'm not sure I'm not perfect but hopefully I'm you know following better practices right exactly and and that's the thing Uh, so full disclosure my son is is blind and that's why accessibility to me is is a a very big concern. I don't profess to be perfect at it either, um, but I'm learning uh, again, uh, just like you are. Um, the The problem that I had with Gutenberg was, you know, uh, accessibility. I mean, the the biggest example is if you want to change the font size on a block, uh, it could be 27 tabs to get back to. Uh, or 27 keystrokes to get back to the the, the the drop down, which, yeah, it works, but it's not great. So, and, you know, uh, everyone involved is very aware of it um, and they're working to fix it. So that's, that's what matters to me. The, um, the uh, study that WP campus uh, yeah. just, they did some crowdfunding for yes. they, used to give, they used to give form. I was, I, I donated to it because I believe in it that strongly. I did um, well. Have you had an opportunity to glance through that study and are you happy with the results? I mean, not happy that there are issues, yeah. but are you happy that they've, with what they've uncovered and being able to set a, a direction going forward? Yeah, I've, I've skimmed it. I haven't, I haven't d- 
done, done a deep dive into it. But um, yeah, I'm I'm happy that you know professionals went into it and were able to basically tear it apart and say, okay, here are the issues because I don't I don't know that they knew everything that was wrong with it, and I mean until a professional looks through it and you know with a fine tooth comb, I don't think they I don't think anyone would. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm happy that that happened. I'm happy that, um, you know, that the core team is, is uh, like the WordPress core team mm -hmm. is taking it seriously. Um, because it didn't look like they were for a while. Um, and that was, that was my big concern. And the real concern is it wasn't necessarily for visitors to websites that Gutenberg was accessible. It was right. for people who want to build a website that they exactly. would be able to use the editor. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. It's, it's the editor itself. Um, basically when it comes to the content, so for, for someone visiting your site, as long as the theme was accessible and uh, you were doing all the right things with your images, putting alt, ta alt tags and, and all that, then yeah, it, the the output was accessible, but the the editing experience was it was accessible in that it was you could navigate, but it was just a, it was basically a, a poor user experience for someone who had to use the keyboard, whether that's a someone visually impaired or someone who just can't use a mouse. Mm -hmm. So it's challenging. Yes. At the best, yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I also am happy that we have um, a, basically a roadmap to go forward yes, and, and make things exactly. Better, so. Exactly. Um, we both know people. I mean, obviously, you're very close to somebody who would like to be able to perhaps build websites in the future. Yeah. Um, if he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps. Yeah. Exactly. But we. But we both know people who are currently in, in the business of building websites for whom that's really, um, really important. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Uh, anything else you want to touch on before I get to our rapid fire questions? Not that I can think of. Okay. Well, here they come. Ready? All right. I'm ready. What are two or three or four must have plugins uh, that you recommend to other people when they're building a website? Um, not to be specific, but uh, I, well, I'm going to be specific. Um, I theme security. I really like them. Uh, it, uh, can put multiple protections on your site uh, so that it doesn't get hacked. Um, Beaver Builder, because I like Beaver Builder. Uh, <laughs> it's easy to drag and drop, but I mean, any, any page builder really helps in building a custom site without having to dive too much into the code. Um, I usually put in um, either ACF or uh, CPT UI if you're going to build out a site that has multiple data types, um, like say a portfolio. You don't necessarily want that on a page. Um, you might want it to act like a post because you want it dated, uh, that sort of thing, but it might be good as a, as a separate piece. Um, and can I think of one more? Well, if you're, uh, 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 I think that's good. How do you back up websites? Do you use a plugin or do you do it through? I, oh yes, that's right. That's what I was going to think of. Um, so I use Backup Buddy for uh, un uh, like just automatic backups. Uh, but if it's just like a one-off, I usually download all-in-one uh, migration because uh, it kind of backs everything up to a single uh, WPress file, which I think is a zip file just with a different uh, extension. Um, and it downloads, and it's it's super fast, super easy to to migrate to a different server or a different site yes. or anything like that. Very good. Um, when you, during your, let's say during your WordPress career so far, have you had a mentor? And if you have, um, who was it and how did that work for you? Did I have a mentor? Even if it was short, short left, no? Okay. No. Um, you know what? It's been just grabbing little bits here and there. It's never been one person who's been like, here you go, come on under my wing, you know, that sort of yeah. thing. It's, it's, it's been, um, you know, hearing bits from WordCamps because, I mean, I've been going, uh, I went to WordCamp Toronto back in 07. Uh, I started going there. So, like, hearing bits and, and that's where kind of, that's where the, the question earlier about, you know, what do people not think of? 
that kind of, that kind of flourished in my head because you had right. people who were marketers, you had people um, who were designers, you, you you had that that whole you know spectrum of of people who deal with the web but aren't necessarily developers. So yeah, just gleaning bits of information from everybody. If somebody wanted to you to be a mentor, would you be open to that experience? Absolutely, I would. Yeah, I've yeah. mentored people, and it's a lot of fun. It, it feels good to give back yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is who is someone? Sorry, not what, but who is someone uh, you admire in the WordPress community, and why? Um, lately, uh, the two that I've been really impressed with are Rachel Cherry and uh, Morton Rent Hendrickson. I think I pronounced that properly. Sorry if I didn't. Um, with the uh, with the big push on accessibility um, and the and WordPress governance as a whole, um, I like to see it to be a little bit more democratic uh, than what it is currently, and they're doing a big push on that. That's great. Yeah. No, I they are definitely big names in WordPress, and for the, all the right reasons. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, when Morton followed Good uh, WP Coffee Talk on Twitter, one of my coworkers who. Um, I just hired him in March, and so he's just learning WordPress, and he he's go-getter. He went on lynda.com, and he started learning WordPress, so he was looking through um, my Twitter account to see who has said what and that kind of thing, and he, all of a sudden he goes, no way! My lynda.com <laughs> teacher followed you! <laughs> so yeah. He's like, he knew, he knew Morton's name. Yeah. From lynda.com and he was super impressed with that so Morton oh yeah for sure <laughs> and i've known rachel for a few years now and um, rachel has such good intentions um and is such a leader in uh, yeah. moving things forward in especially with accessibility so absolutely, yeah absolutely yeah. perfect perfect examples of people to admire in wordpress yeah what's something that you'd like to learn in wordpress but haven't yet tackled um well i mean Again, going back to Gutenberg, um, the way that Gutenberg handles content is it fundamentally changes how plugins are created. Um, yes, there are still there still is a lot of PHP involved with it, um, but it's moving much more towards uh, JavaScript React. Um, I've done a little bit of React. Um, but I want to learn it deeply as as uh, that word has come up more than once. Everyone's <laughs> used to quote Matt, even though it was an off the cuff remark. I think it's hilarious, but it's true. Um, even because I mean, so much, uh, so much of the web, especially more so on the web app side of things than you know than static, static websites, um, are moving toward that. You know, different JavaScript frameworks. React seems to be the big one out there. Um, I mean, there's lots of others out there, but I mean, React seems to be the one that everyone's asking for. And now that WordPress is on it, I really want to get more into it. Um, I would like to build a plugin that that utilizes React and uh, so that it can be used in Gutenberg. That's kind of that's kind of my next step in in the WordPress journey. That's awesome. I wonder if anybody, I'm sure they have, has purchased WP deeply yet. I don't know. But that would be it would be a good a good uh, are you are you like me do you collect uh urls that you never use <laughs> I, I try uh, and be better about it <laughs> 404 play anybody <laughs> so the, still, the, the is backstory, that still undeveloped <laughs> yeah exactly the backstory on that is uh was it the after party at or was it no, the speaker dinner it was I, after the speaker it was actually but it was before. It was like, it was, I think we got there the day before. It was. It was in Ottawa. So yeah, I think it must have been after the speaker dinner or something we like that. We were at the Byward yeah. Market, yeah. Yeah, and we just, I don't know who said it. I Shanta. honestly don't. It was probably it was Shanta. 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 Yeah. And I'm like, I took out my phone, went out to GoDaddy. I'm like, oh, yep, it's available. I'm grabbing that one. And it's like 404play.com.me uh, 404 and .org. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let your mind wander there. I'm not going to point it out. But anyway. <laughs> The three of us have to get together and work project oh, yeah, on that totally one do. for sure. I, I think you know? that should be like uh, what we do at the, the after the speaker dinner on on uh, in uh, Ottawa. Yeah, in Ottawa, definitely. Yeah, especially you know, if we can get an Airbnb all together, that'd be awesome. We should yeah, totally exactly. do that. Even if it's just a one page landing page, we yeah, should have totally. some fun with it. Exactly. Absolutely. What is one of the biggest WordPress mistakes you've ever made, and what did you learn from it? Ooh. 
Um, it's see that's the thing there's been a lot of mistakes when it comes to the web but nothing is words wordpress specific necessarily okay. so but um i developed a theme from scratch for a company um or an organization actually and the design uh and this and this happens so so often um the designer didn't think about the uh, responsive um and when it comes to responsive design, like, yeah, there's a lot of things, especially when you're using um, a framework like uh, a bootstrap or the other one that I can never remember the name of foundation. That's it. Um, that will automatically stack things. Um, that's not always good. Sometimes it's okay, but the way that they designed it, it was very much like it was a, it was a single page um with each section being a full page uh thing so you'd click next and it would slide you down i mean lots of nifty features and that sort of thing works great on a desktop of any size uh, you know i managed to make it look good that way but three months later or something like that the client comes back and says um it looks horrible on on iphone like yeah it does <laughs> but I'm not a designer. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can, I, if I, can, if I have to, I'll design something, but I also know what looks good and what doesn't. I knew the iPhone didn't look good, but they didn't care. Right. And then they suddenly cared. And well, no, uh, sorry. The designer didn't care. I don't oh, know gotcha. if the, but because I didn't have direct contact with the, with the client, gotcha. I didn't know if they liked it or not. Uh, I don't even know if they pointed it out. So, I mean, that's, that's a big thing um, that when I'm, when I'm doing a project, like, okay, have you thought about mobile design yet? Are you going, do you care about mobile design? Because you should. You should have actually designed that first. Because right. I don't know what the percentage is nowadays, but like 60, Over 50, I hear, yeah. Yeah. 60% of people only look at the web only on their phones. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, if you're at work and you need to quickly look something up, then you'll use it on a desktop. But I mean, so much of our life is spent away from the computer, but still connected. And that yeah. connection is. Yeah. Right the there. Phone. So, yeah. yeah, that's. The Good point. Mistake, uh, rounding back to your question, the mistake was not say, not insisting on it. Okay. Not, not insisting on making sure that mobile was, was thought about. You know, I had so many websites that were already designed when smartphones came out. And in WordPress, right? Because it hasn't been that many years that we've been having to design for mobile. So I want to say like the first year, yeah. there was no such thing as smart, smart and responsive and all of that. Oh, yeah, and, exactly. And I discovered that Jetpack had a little like switch you could switch on to make it mobile responsive. Yes. It was ugly as sin. Oh, yeah. But it, it worked. Like it looked like the first iOS uh, <laughs> things with the, with the pinstripe background. Yeah. Yeah. All gray and blue, and it was just hideous. But yeah. Google respected it as mobile responsive. So exactly. I threw that yeah. switch, and if somebody wanted something prettier, they had to pay me more money, <laughs> which is never a bad exactly. thing. <laughs> never a bad thing. Yeah. Okay. What's your proudest WordPress moment? Oh. I think the honestly the first step in in uh, in speaking at a WordCamp because um, I mean I had I'm trying to think like I hadn't done a ton of of uh, public speaking but I knew I liked it um, you know uh, I can really speak off the cuff you know I, I basically the way that I structure my talks is point form and I fill in the blanks. Um, usually with stories or anecdotes, that sort of thing. I can usually do that relatively well, you know, uh, with varying degrees of success. But, um, but yeah, I think taking that first step, and I mean, had I not done it, we probably wouldn't have met, uh, right. you know, uh, and, you know, at least a dozen people, I probably wouldn't have gotten to know as well as I have, had I not taken that first step. And I mean, um, I look at even uh, last week and the weekend before, I, I don't know when you're going to air this, but uh, at WordCamp Hamilton, um, 
I remember uh, one of the girls who has only been using WordPress for a month, like three month? months, yeah, three months, yeah, like that. And she got up and did a talk, yeah, because every experience, every um, every level of of uh, ability is respected in the WordPress community, mm-hmm. and there's always going to be a beginner and to hear a beginner's perspective is invaluable. I mean, I can talk till I'm blue in the face. I've been using WordPress for 15 years, 14 years, something like that. Okay. I'm not saying that my, that my experience is invalid, but to hear it from someone who's been using it for three months is, is amazing to me. I mean, I think it's great. And somebody who learned WordPress with the block editor. Yeah. Like didn't have to yeah, relearn exactly. WordPress because of the block editor. Well, that's the thing. Like the, yeah. like the idea that, oh, there was something else. Oh, that, right. that looks weird. Why would I use that? This is so yeah. much better because I mean, it really is compared to, you know, compared to using tiny MCE. Like, I mean, right. they've done a lot of great things over the years with it, but it's still, you know, a very, plain text editor. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I'm excited about where it's going for sure. Yes, definitely. If you weren't working in web, what career might you like to attempt? That's an excellent question. I mean, I love cooking. Uh, I do a lot of, um, I do a, lo- a lot of barbecue. And when I say barbecue, I mean like smoker, low and slow that sort of thing Mm -hmm. um you know part of me thinks that i should have been born in the southern states but uh just because that seems to be more their thing um but yeah like uh but not just that i you know i do a lot of different things my wife calls me the dip god because i like (laughs) dips with different things and trying different flavors and adding things that you wouldn't think of necessarily putting into a dip um uh yeah, I think I think it'd be that sort of thing. That's awesome. Yeah, you could get a job in Nashville. They had some great barbecue down there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What's something on your bucket list? Oh my. Um. I feel like I want to try skydiving. Ooh. Because I have a very acute fear of heights um and i think that would be like facing your fear i feel like i want to try skydiving if the plane is already on fire and gonna crash anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <coughs> that's fair that's what i need to break your drink there i am um... <sighs> I love to go to Niagara Falls. I love to stand yeah. right at the edge and scare the crap out of myself, <laughs> thinking yeah. that all it would take was a few more steps and I'd be over that thing. Yeah. I'm never going to do it, obviously, but it's just oh. like that power that's right there is like, yeah, I could never it's jump true. out of a plane. <laughs> yeah. More power to you. If you ever yeah. do it, I want to see the video. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll bring a GoPro. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and show us or tell us uh, about one of your hidden talents. Um. You know, something that WordPress people wouldn't know about you, perhaps. Oh, hold on. I'm not sure if you can see it with the webcam. Oh, yeah. Wiggle your ears. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I think you're the first person to actually show us. Everybody else just tells us about stuff. So that's awesome. We got a demo. We finally got one. Woo! I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> and I was thinking about it. Like, if you had never gotten into speaking at WordCamp when you, when you said that a few minutes ago. Yeah. I might never have been gifted with as many, what are the kinder eggs <laughs> as I have been over the years and coffee crisp and uh, Canadian Smarties, which for you uh, people in the U.S. have no idea what that is. Our Smarties are these little chalky things. Theirs yep. are like M&M's with better chocolate. Exactly. Yep. No, you know, no disrespect to M&M's. No, <laughs> none, none whatsoever. I love m and it's, it's just different. That's all. It's just exactly. Different. Exactly. So, yeah. So, you know, thank you for being one of my Canadian chocolate connections. Yes. I appreciate so, that. I, I've never taken it across the border. Of course never, not. Never taken it across the border. <laughs> I actually, um, 
I think Shanta, I think you and Shanta probably do this all the time together for me when we do this. There was a word camp a few years back and you all gifted me with like a, a case of them. There were like 24. Yes. And they were all Ninja Turtles inside and things. They were really a lot of fun. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. I, actually, I actually posted on Facebook, um, how many Kinder Eggs is too many Kinder Eggs for lunch? <laughs> and I've connected really well to the holistic community because I used to run a massage school. Yeah. I had people like taking me so seriously and like, like m messaging me that I need to eat healthier and all this. And I'm like, look, girl. <laughs> Have you seen me? If I look like I eat healthy, hand me the chocolate. <laughs> exactly. And like honestly, if you if if you have to wait for the Canadian contingent to bring it to you, you are going to eat them until they're gone. Indulge. You're gonna have to say. wait, and then you're gonna have to wait another you know two or three months, depending on exactly work camps. <laughs> and at work camp Hamilton, I had my first ever butter tart. Those Wait, hold on, hold on. Amazing. Th this this past one? Yeah. Was your first butter tart? My first butter tart, and I was like blown away. Now every time I have to go to Canada, I have to get them. Those well, were amazing. Yeah. I mean, uh, the guy that I share the office with, every time we go out for a sandwich, he gets one. I like, need more. Yeah. Had, so if you ever, yeah, if you're ever in my neck of the woods, uh, you need to come. There is a uh, a sandwich shop called great canadian meat company they do uh they do like the the stuff that you see in the um in the convenience stores basically and they send it all across canada but they're where they do all the smoking and packaging and all that stuff is here in whitby and they have a little storefront where you can go in and you get sandwiches and they're like you basically get a sand like a whole meal for like eight bucks and that's unheard of in Canada. Like, uh, you know, um, uh, a meal deal from McDonald's is 12 bucks these days in Canada. Right, right. So, sorry, that was just an aside. And they have butter tarts. So then they're good. Right, so we'll both be in Ottawa. I yes. would hope you'd bring me at least one. I will. I promise. That would be awesome. <laughs> so tell people where they can find you, um, social media and your website. Uh, social media, uh, the Maddie G pretty much everywhere. Um, I don't use Instagram very much anymore, but Facebook and Twitter for sure. Uh, and my website is mattgram.ca. Very good. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. I, uh, you know, I love you. You are one of the most awesome, like, WordPress people I know. Oh, thank and you. you too. <laughs> I, love, I love our friendship. It's awesome. Yeah, we can always absolutely. just pick up where we left off. And totally. you have a beautiful family. So, yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Um, yeah, so this, I'm not sure when this is going to air because I'm rethinking how often I post these. I have so many now, I think I might go to two a week. So we'll see. Why not? Otherwise, it's not going to be till September. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. So I'm thinking, you know, sometime maybe in July or August, we'll, okay. we'll get you online. But um, yeah. yeah, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for being part of the WP Coffee Talk experience. Absolutely. Thank and you for having me. Sharing with me. Yeah, for sure. So bye, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>